What's up, Internet? It's your soul. And back on this topic of Jeffrey Epstein, mainly because this story touches on so many other threads, which I've covered for a long time. I've been looking into for probably over 10, 10, 15 years by now. And some of these topics are ones which the majority of people know nothing at all about. They don't really even accept a real. And when these things do sort of come up in the mainstream media, which they would usually class as meaning that it was real to some extent, they just don't seem to read about it, focus on it, take any notice in it. I don't know whether it's just most people don't understand these topics or they just they just it's just way beyond what they what they can relate to. But I'm gonna take you through a few links here from mainstream media. Um, again, not saying that mainstream media is uh, trustworthy or the best source of information, but when it comes to you know big stories like this, usually what they say can be backed up with some evidence. They won't just jump in and completely fabricate information when they can get into legal trouble. More often than not, they do sometimes. But anyway, my point being that if we look through some of these uh, links, I'm going to then take you back through to some other links documentaries and other uh, researchers who've been looking at this subject for years and years and years and years. Um, James Corbett, for example, who I'll bring in here in a bit, is somebody who was actually on the list of uh, fake news purveyors that came out uh, a couple of years ago, I think, um, where they were basically, the I would say, um, elements of the governmental system, whoever they may be, probably criminal elements, basically were looking to discredit and get rid of people that were commenting negatively about them and so he and other people were classed as fake news and kind of um, said to be groups who should be sort of deleted from the internet or, or blacklisted kind of thing um, and yet if you actually look at his work and research for the most part it's some of the best researched detailed and eye-opening material on many important subjects that, uh, that I've ever come across and that probably most people will have come across so I'm going to show you a little bit from that in a bit but I'm just going to start off with this story here. So this is on RT. You know, people say, oh, the Russians, RT. Well, the thing about RT is, yes, it is Russian state-sponsored media. And no, you shouldn't blindly trust any media and definitely not a state-sponsored source of media. But at the same time, um, in my experience, they do have a willingness to expose stories that the American and British media often won't. Um, and to my mind, having looked at the evidence, I would say often they... They don't need to invent or fabricate information to make it look bad because it is bad and the evidence shows you that it's bad. So in a sense, the RT's job in terms of um, making Russia look good against the activity of America isn't that difficult because America, uh, well, elements within the, the system of America, you know, do such terrible things that, yeah, it's pretty simple. But um, so this is tying into Deutsche Bank. And so it's basically saying here, um, because of his heavy involvement with Jeffrey Epstein's heavy involvement with with obviously lots of money and investments and various different things behind the scenes, lots of different big names and um, technology projects and you name it, pretty much with his funds, he was you know seems to have been involved in a lot of different things. Um, it's basically saying he was using Deutsche Bank to um, operate even after he was investigated and I think even prosecuted um, as a sex offender. And, uh, you know, it would seem that um, it says here J.P. Morgan Chase cut ties with him. Uh, you know, who knows exactly what went on behind the scenes there. Uh, we don't really have much to go on that's actually real. But um, the point being that he was working definitely with Deutsche Bank because Deutsche Bank effectively are known as being one of the groups who um, seem to have very little care and concern for who they do business with. Let's put it like that. Uh, most of the banks seem to be fairly similar like that. But for some reason... Um, I guess Epstein crosses some lines for some of them. The reason why this is important, apart from the Deutsche Bank are being involved in in the um, investigations now, is basically because if we come to uh, nine eleven, the events of World Trade Center, you know, attacks in in America, Pentagon attacks, so many years ago, which I and many other people dug deeply into for years and years and years. Uh, if you scroll down to, I mean, I've mentioned Deutsche Bank up here. Um, basically because I used to make software for Deutsche Bank at the time the 9-11 happened but that's that's kind of a side story but anyway um, uh, yeah we come down to James Corbett's uh, video here follow the money 9-11 trillions and this is one of the most eye-opening documentaries I've ever seen particularly because I was so involved in 
making money software financial software at the time and obviously then researching so deeply into 9-11 just so you know at the time of 9-11 i was working in uh, central london it's my first kind of professional software engineering job and i was making software for banks and deutsche bank happened to be a client now there's a variety of people in here in this um documentary richard a grove being one of them who give very interesting testimonies and uh he's one of the people who he actually had a similar job to me, basically, working, I think it was in New York, um, making software, and they found that there was evidence of massive fraud going on um, within some of the institutions that were involved, and he was trying to alert his bosses to that. Um, and, he, you know, they're having a hard time getting the bosses to pay any attention, and uh, in the end, the bosses agreed to have a big meeting with, and told them to bring all the evidence and so on, and... Funnily enough, they happened to agree to have it on the exact floor of the of the World Trade Center towers on 9-11, which got destroyed, and uh, his boss never actually turned up for the meeting. And his friends died who attended that meeting. He didn't because his taxi was late and he was late for the meeting. So, you know, basically, if his taxi had, had not been, or car, whatever he was in, had, had got there on time, we wouldn't know that this had happened. We wouldn't know that potentially some of the companies involved were definitely attempting to cover up well it looks very much like they were definitely trying to cover up massive financial fraud and there's so many different pieces of evidence in this video i really recommend everyone watch it it's just really eye-opening but one of the things that's interesting that you don't hear too much about is that uh deutsche bank were actually the bank which were involved with uh trading that happened prior to the events of 9-11 which heavily suggest that those people doing the trades knew that this attack was going to happen. You wouldn't be making the trades that were made unless um, unless you had foreknowledge, forewarning. And all of these trades, as far as I know, at least what's in this video and, and some minor mainstream news story coverage that happened at the time, uh, went through Deutsche Bank. So Jeffrey Epstein, amazingly to me in a way, and not amazingly at the same time, um, we've had these stories coming out basically saying that he uh, wanted to seed the human race with his dna and <laughs> this is on rt and uh, new york post uh, basically explaining that i wasn't there i don't know how true this is but it's claiming that he said to various people that he wanted to impregnate lots of women with his sperm to create a kind of baby factory basically for to spread his genes around and that he had an interest in the eugenics projects and movements eugenics being the um idea that basically humans are right to determine the procreation of other humans and specifically try to clean up the gene pool and improve the gene pool through reproduction um, rather than just allowing it to happen as it happens through people's choice and will um, and you know on one end of things you could say that uh, someone with a billion dollars could have lots and lots of children made like it's talking about him suggesting he was going to do here using their own sperm because they think their genetics are the best and so therefore they're going to go ahead and make as many children as possible. On the other end, you've got the people who literally think that we need to murder or sterilise everybody who doesn't fit a certain profile for genetic, um, let's say, excellence in the, from their perspective, uh, which doesn't actually mean real excellence, it just means what they judge to be excellent. But... Um, and that did happen in the past. You know, it was a very big thing in America and probably Britain and, you know, obviously Germany as well, um, where they, significant parts of the establishment, let's say the wealthiest people, took to heart this idea and literally did go around sterilising forcibly women, um, no doubt probably killing quite a lot as well, imprisoning basically people who, who had uh, IQ, uh that had IQ levels below a certain level which they deemed acceptable, let's put it like that. And yeah, this was a big deal. And the whole idea of that Hitler had a large part of his idea of the super race and German Aryan superiority actually synced up with that whole eugenics concept and the actual bringing about of the IQ testing system. And it just played into that whole idea of superiority and competition and Actually, a lot of this stuff has roots in inferiority. The people involved think that and feel that they're inferior. Uh, you know, the Germans, for example, had lost World War I and they were very much under pressure financially and so on. They felt like they'd lost their um, power 
and rather than just admit oh we've lost our power we don't feel very good let's work through it and uh you know come out of this even better than before and balance and learn from it they basically kind of unconsciously or in denial from my perspective basically said well uh we're the best and you know to that end we're going to force our power onto as many people as possible and overpower them and that's going to prove our power in the world and that actually we are the best obviously most of the rest of the world didn't agree with them on that and you know the rest is history but it's a very complicated history and many of the people involved in the nazis movement in germany were taken to america and britain and russia after world war ii and you know it seems to have been that particularly in america they had a very big role to play in the thinking that was born out after world war ii in government and associated corporations within the military and secret services intelligence i wouldn't really use the word intelligence but that's what they call themselves apparently um so i'm not really surprised when you have these groups uh talking about eugenics and uh, transhumanism and you've got ray kurtzfall who uh, was a top i'm not sure if he still is but was at one time the head technologist for google talking about literally uploading their consciousness into robots and cyborgs and making humans irrelevant basically that's their aim and they they believe the human body is destined to die and there's nothing you can do about that or they're not going to figure out how to stop it so they're just going to create technology basically and you know anybody with an emotional system understands immediately that or, or let's say anybody with feelings that they can really feel understands that moving your consciousness into a robot is not really going to be a complete copy of you is it it's, it's not going to be you just having a different body it's going to be you're going to lose as a bare minimum let's say it's possible to some extent you're definitely going to lose your emotional reality i would say the robots and computers don't have emotions full stop so to even consider that that doing that is an actual valid solution to the problem of uh, the human condition let's say and, and death shows that you basically don't have any understanding of emotionality and don't have any respect for emotionality and that in turn means that you don't have any respect for free will you don't really care who you overpower and we see that in the way that google operates we see that in the way that many of the big tech companies operate in terms of them projecting an image that they care about people and so on but in reality the decisions they make at least the first the first decisions they make before people fight back against it nearly always involve them overpowering other people and not really paying any attention to people or communicating with them um, it's almost like people are just an annoying thing in the background for them and 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 that i'm going to come back to this story but that just brings me back to this story which is a post i made on steam a while ago which is uh, from the documentary google and the world brain which i definitely recommend watching it's available for free i've linked it in this post here uh, it's on archive.org i think from memory and so there's a quote here from uh, the founder of Wired magazine in that documentary. And he said he was talking to the co-creators of Google originally before it was a big thing. And he basically said to them, well, we've already got search engines. Why Why do you think you need to make another search engine? Uh, and they said, well, no, that's not what it's about. Google isn't intended to create profit. Their aim has been to create the most advanced AI. In other words, they were never really Google was never really meant to be exactly a search engine although that was what they became famous for the idea was to create the world's most advanced artificial intelligence which obviously having a search engine is a key part of because it allows them to access all the information from humans and put it into their system and that's why they've been so involved in scanning libraries of books and so on just to get literally as much information as they can in order to create this super artificial intelligence system so when we come back to jeffrey epstein and technocracy and um, whole cyborg transhumanist agenda and the fact that he was actually involved with the big tech companies knew a lot of those people uh, really adds another angle onto all of this um, which you know isn't that surprising to me but it's interesting to actually see this um, out in the mainstream media perhaps being able to smash past some people's conspiracy theorist filters which will inform them automatically that anyone that talks about this kind of stuff is kooky and wears a tinfoil hat oh no but now the mainstream media is talking about it it must be real um <laughs> so yeah is i mean it literally even mentions here um disturbed him for, for its echoes of the nazi race science um so i mean this is interesting it is his lawyer this is his own uh, epstein's own lawyer alan dershowitz who himself i've seen good research into him showing he's very very dodgy 
Um, even him apparently saying that he found it disturbing because of it echoing um, of, of Epstein's views and eugenics echoing Nazism. Now that's, I don't know how true that is, but that's what they say. So, um, yeah, it says here the alleged serial paedophile was also interested in having his head and penis cryogenically frozen, which is, again, part of transhumanism along the idea that basically if the technology doesn't come about before he dies to allow him to be uploaded into a, a robot, then he wants his uh, what he considers vital organs saved so that that can happen when it's possible. Uh, bizarre. I mean, who knows how true this is? I don't know, but maybe it is. I don't know, but, uh, you know, very strange to have your penis frozen. I don't know why that would be important to you. Why wouldn't you just have your whole body frozen? It's a bit weird. I don't know. I'm not an expert in cryogenics, but definitely strange. So there's also been stories coming out allegedly of, of testimony, from recorded testimony from eight-year-old girls about him abusing them and people he knew saying, oh, the younger the better, and that kind of thing. Really, you know, again, I'm not able to say how true any of this stuff is, but if it is true, then obviously it makes him look very, very, very bad. Um, you know, it's like with with every new piece of information that comes out, he just looks worse and worse and worse, and it does reaffirm people's theories that he was part of a what people would call deep state agenda to blackmail people, politicians, whoever it might be, to get them into compromising situations with committing, you know, crimes that would ruin their career. And then obviously that then means that you can get them to do whatever you want as long as you've got it on video. If, if you've got a prime minister on video raping a boy or girl or whatever who's young, uh, you know, what are they going to do? How are they going to... Um, they've got no defence against you, basically. They have to do what you tell them to do, pretty much. I mean, they can't go to their military, probably, and say, oh, by the way, I've been buggering little boys. Can you protect me? I mean, maybe they could, but probably not. Um, and, and that brings us on to... I mean, th th there's this other story here as well, just from the New York Times, talking about the same thing, talking about how, you know, he wanted to <laughs> have sex with lots of women or have his sperm in, uh, inseminated into lots of women to produce lots of children. And, you know, that, that does fit in with the concept of... Uh, basically he views himself as being superior to everyone else and, um, you know, therefore there should be more of him and less of everyone else, which is, yeah, I mean, it does definitely remind us of, of Nazism and the super race and all that kind of stuff. Um, unusual to hear of somebody with so much money being exposed as actually literally trying to do that. Um, and, you know, I suspect that this is only the beginning of all of the information coming out here. Um, and they, they do kind of ridicule him in here, but, I mean... It, it says here, uh, a charity established by Mr. Epstein gave $20,000 to the Worldwide Transhumanist Association, which now operates under the name Humanity Plus. Oh, nice, nicely remarketed name there. Um, the goal is to deeply influence a new generation of thinkers who dare to envision humanity's next steps. Well, that's great, but um, yeah, I wouldn't suggest you should upload yourself into a robot. Um, yeah, so it talks about here how some of the scientists, are, well, they're basically trying to distance themselves from him now. Some of the people that have been shown in photos with him saying, oh, he wasn't that smart and, it, you know, he, I, he wasn't very scientific and he said very strange things. Uh, I found it interesting that Mr. Epstein appears to have gained entry, entree into the scientific community through John Brockman, a literary agent whose best-selling science writers include Richard Dawkins. Ah, uh, and these are the characters that I'm not familiar with. Um, he refused to comment <laughs> um, or didn't respond anyway. Uh, so, yeah, these these characters who, you know, people who listen to me in detail understand that I'm not religious, but I do understand my origins in creation. I do understand that the universe is created. I do understand that with every moment we're creating with our thoughts. And that's where the source of our true power comes from, ultimately, and our, and our feelings and other parts of ourselves. Uh, you don't need machines to do this stuff. It's It's you developing yourself that gets your power. Uh, and it is possible to get to spirit through that and ultimately to the the energy that creates worlds, if you want to call it that, or God or whatever you want to call it. Um, so when I you know listen to people like Richard Dawkins, I sort of cringe a bit because I feel a bit, I feel sorry for them, to be honest, because, you know, most people are misled from my perspective when it comes to these subjects. And I feel like he's he's not doing anyone any favours. But do you find it interesting that um, apparently, you know, this character connects Epstein together with Richard Dawkins and that doesn't entirely surprise me to be honest um, so yeah so now we come into this story Daily Mail Jeffrey Epstein became an FBI informant to secure a sweetheart deal and shut down federal probe into the paedophile's abuse of underage girls 
So this is, you know, this is to me, this is getting to the core of, of things. It literally is saying that, uh, I mean, there's an FBI document down here, uh, which literally says, uh, so case agent advised writer that Epstein is currently being prosecuted by the state of Florida and is complying with all conditions of his plea with the state of Florida. This is for, as I understand it, for child abuse and that kind of thing. Epstein has also provided information to the FBI as agreed upon. Case agent advised that no federal prosecution will occur in this matter as long as Epstein continues to uphold his agreement with the state of Florida. Case agent also advised that no further forfeiture assistance will be required for this case. Case agent is requested to contact writer in the event this matter moves forward on a federal level. Um, in that no further forfeiture related action is deemed necessary to this matter, it is required that subfile FF be closed. So obviously I don't have the full context for that, context for that, but it does sound a lot like it's saying, at least in one case or charge, he was let off basically because he was giving evidence to the FBI, presumably on other people. Now, you know, you without knowing the full background of the way these groups operate and the way that, first of all, he's likely just being protected and this is an excuse, um, you might think that, that that's, you know, well, maybe he had some excellent evidence. Maybe they had good reason for doing that. And maybe, maybe, you know, you might take it to the extreme and say maybe the evidence that he had is so important on some people that um, not prosecuting him for abusing children is actually acceptable. Because maybe by getting the evidence that he has, you're going to save a billion lives or something like that because you have some amazing evidence on some super criminal somewhere. Obviously, we don't have that information, but I think it's far more likely that either A, he's being protected and he maybe never even gave any useful information to anyone. This is just a cover story. Um, or, you know, possible also that the FBI agents involved basically thought that their own sort of career might get a big boost if they are able to get evidence out of him that really implicates some other big criminals or something like that um and you know they're willing to sacrifice these children let's say um in the name of either their career or chasing some sort of other goal so you know that in itself says a lot about the fbi really doesn't it i mean literally listen to the words i'm using i mean they're literally willing to sacrifice the justice for these children um for some other goal so no, if they're willing to do that, then why wouldn't they be just as effectively complicit in crimes against children? And we've seen many, many, many cases going back decades. Um, you can look at the Franklin cover up. You can look at um, num numerous other stories relating to various different abuses in Britain and America and probably no doubt most other countries uh, where significant evidence has come forward and then it's either been lost or buried or covered up. Uh, you can look at the stories of how I forgot the number, I think it was 200 or 2,000 cases of um, people in NASA viewing child pornography, for example. And there was a similar ridiculously high figure for the Pentagon and for the Houses of Parliament in Britain. Uh, and yet, as far as I know, there was no prosecutions as a result of that. So there's no question in my mind, and to many people, that these establishments are covering up and protecting those people who are abusing children on a large scale, and there's a reason for that. And I would suggest that A, it's because people at the top of these groups are also abusing children and B it's because this is a large part of their technique or tactic to control the entire planet because you know you one group of 10 people can't control the whole planet on their own but they can control let's say 100 people or a thousand people by having blackmail material on them and if those 100 or a thousand people that they control are people in key positions in society, like heads of corporations and, and governments, then effectively that initial 10 or even one person can control, to some extent, every single person on the planet through back blackmailing the right people. And the best possible blackmail probably is basically getting them seen to be doing the more, most evil things people can imagine. So it seems extremely likely to me that um, all of this is all tied up together and since I'm 99.9% .9 sure that 9-11, for example, was definitely an inside job by corrupt elements of various secret services, uh, corporations and military contractors and so on, uh, and I'm not going to get too deeply into that, but there's a massive, massive, massive mountain of evidence that that's true, and people that ridicule that 99.9% .9 of the time have never even dug into the one top 1% one of it, let alone all of it. Um, so given that I'm certain that that's the case, uh, I think that it is right to consider that Epstein's situation here probably does to some extent 
tie into the kinds of people that were involved in in 9-11 and illegal wars and on and on and on and on and on and this is why it's so important that he's protected to the maximum while he's in prison and i know there was a story that came out that said that he was apparently found seeming to have either committed suicide or maybe or tried to commit suicide or, or was attacked something like that yeah that should not be happening he should be on he should be basically watched by cameras and numerous people 24 hours a day because the information that he has likely is enough to if used correctly really help us heal our planet and build a better society and a better future for everyone else there's a good chance that that's true if he's dead we can't do that and i think you know the fact that he was even allowed to get into the situation where he was nearly dead um doesn't speak very well of the people involved in that system and it either means that they are corrupt and they're not really looking out for him and do want him to come to harm or they're just ignorant and aren't really paying attention and maybe they trust too much in the government or whatever it is and well they just want to take responsibility for it whatever it is you know it's quite sad and, and the whole thing's obviously sad but um yeah it'd be really good if people put pressure on everybody that they can put pressure on to make sure that people focus on this subject and um we squeeze the most out of this that we can in terms of identifying real criminals potentially people who some of the most evil people on the planet doing the most evil things imaginable to people of all ages all around the world constantly and some of these people determine policies in governments they literally determine whether or not you get money when you get sick you know whether or not you get hospital treatment these kinds of things and they definitely should not be doing that given the evidence against some of these people and the people they associate with and in my opinion they definitely shouldn't be doing it anyway we shouldn't even have that system in the first place um you know you or i should not be basing whether or not we receive medical treatment on the opinions of someone some multi-millionaire somewhere who you've never even met uh, obviously that's ridiculous but that's what we have and you know the majority of people somehow seem to still think that that's acceptable but Anyway, I I hope that this has uh, maybe filled in some interesting gaps into people's perception of what's going on here. And I definitely would like to see more people taking this seriously and doing research into some of the connected topics like eugenics. The Georgia Guidestones, for example, is a topic which is connected to all of this. Massive stones in Georgia, which um, literally huge pieces of stone, similar to sort of Stonehenge, that have been erected with text on them in multiple different languages, basically saying things like, you know, you've got to live in... in um, harmony with nature and maintain the population level at something like 500 million um so it's, it's basically sort of a, a set of rules for humanity that's meant to survive a nuclear war is what i would imagine and it's like you know you imagine that people will come out after a nuclear war and they're in a mess obviously and they find this these stones oh my god there's these stones here that tell us how to live thanks god kind of thing um but actually you know how are you going to maintain a population under half of Half a, half a billion or whatever it was when you've got a population that's eight billion already where is everyone else going but anyway i'm just saying that it would be really great if more people took this stuff seriously and looked into these subjects properly instead of just writing them off as loony conspiracy theory this is all real stuff you know what you do with it is up to you and you know the the elements of the story may be not entirely true or people's beliefs around it might might not be entirely true but people do have these beliefs these billionaires do do this stuff and you know that in itself is important we need to understand that uh if only because most of the time when you go to buy when you go to buy something in a shop or pay for a service there's a good chance that the people that own that corporation or its parent company or its parent company or its parent company are these people they are this small group of people who um basically have a private network which seeks to facilitate what they view to be their correct or what's correct for the world their their vision for the world and just briefly, I definitely also recommend going and looking up Carol Quigley, the Ivy League historian who wrote the book Tragedy and Hope. And um, there's another book, a good book by Joe Plummer, Tragedy and Hope 101, which breaks down that book because the original books are massive. Uh, but that book tells you in detail how this covert network of extremely wealthy people over the last 200 plus years have been operating behind the scenes to corrupt democracy and basically try to force their view onto everyone else which is that more or less anglo-saxon men are the best people on planet earth and therefore they need to use their billions and billions and billions of dollars to work together to make sure that the uh, the anglo-saxon men rule the world pretty much so uh, again this is 
this is not made up in someone's basement. This is actually works from a scholar of his time, one of the best known academics at the time in America, uh, who wrote a huge book on this with some of the, you know, top quality, some top quality historic research, let's say, into that, uh, as good as most things you're going to find. So, you know, the average person who ridicules this really doesn't have a hope in, in rebutting the things that I'm talking about here if they actually came to be faced with the evidence on it all so yeah i really like to see more people looking into all of this please do pass this on do look into it yourself do share it with other people and let's all talk about it let's all actually realize that people really do think this stuff my grandfather really did go and fight in world war ii against germans who thought similar things to this because they really were trying to take over the world to try to implement uh, a complete basically evil empire system of, of control and enslavement so uh, don't be so naive to think that no one wants to do that now and that they haven't learned a, <laughs> a thing or two since World War II about how to deceive people enough to try to make that happen. Uh, you know, my, my posi position on this is don't believe anything anyone says ever. Do your own research and do accept that some people are so dysfunctional and heartless that they will try to destroy everything, including you, uh, in order to fulfill their agenda, basically. And their agenda might not make any sense at all, but they're doing it anyway. Um, so yeah looking forward to seeing what happens with all of this and uh, yeah let's work together to try and make it the best possible outcome so until next time thanks for listening and I look forward to reading your comments don't forget to upvote share follow and so on and uh, I'll see you next time peace